guys, welcome back to E3. I'm sure you can see what I've just been playing. It's Alien Isolation. I'm here with Gary. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you doing? I'm not doing so well, actually, because oh, I've no. just played <laughs> your ridiculously terrifying game. And I can't, I can't quite describe the, the tension you feel when you're playing it. How, you know, what are the key elements for you in making sure the game is as tense as it is? Um, I think it all comes down to the believability of the alien. Yeah. Uh, we've had to create this creature that feels smart, it's adaptive, it's deadly, it's lethal, it feels like it's hunting you. Mm. So when you put that in the player's mind and you, you face off them against this creature and they see what it's capable of, already they're like, okay, that's, that's something different than I've seen in the game. When they die and start again and it's not in the same position and it's doing something else and they kind of react to it, you're like, yeah, they, they kind of understand that. On top of that, you don't give them a machine gun. <laughs> you say, find stuff in the environment you can use to defend yourself, cause distraction, or you know, just try and survive. And that's that's the, your kind of key to playing the game. And when people realise that, it it changes the whole gameplay. And it, there's things in it that it, it does things that I wasn't expecting. For instance, I hid in a locker and I just assumed I'm in the locker. I'm fine. Yeah. I'll just wait till it walks past. And you have to hold your breath, you have to pull back, and I did one of those things wrong, I made a sound, the alien just rips the locker open, I'm dead. <laughs> so I guess kind of making the alien seem not like a computer AI, but actually seem like a believable creature that is hunting you, you know, how, you know, what assets do you have to do? You've got, you've got motion capture, how do you, you know, how do you make the alien what it is? A lot of, I mean, it's all down to the AI programming team, they've done an incredible job of making this creature that's just based on sensors, so it can, it's, a, it's equivalent of dropping a player in the game and saying, right, anything you see, go and hunt, anything you hear, go and hunt. So it has a set of behaviours that it uses to deal with that information, and then it reacts to that. It takes things into fact into account, like whether it's seen you before, if it recognises you. Uh, we kind of match that against the gameplay because very early we found we've made this perfect killer, and actually if it found you every time and killed you, there wasn't much gameplay there. <laughs> so we do things like when it first sees you, it kind of turns and hisses, and if it hasn't seen you before, it's trying to make out what you are. Yeah. So if you're quick to go away, then it would just kind of search over there of where you've been, and then we kind of extrapolate that out for the rest of the game and the other mechanics. So a uh, part of that is l it reacting to the devices you use. So if you craft things to build or use a weapon, you know, it might work once, it might work twice, sometimes it won't work at all, yeah. and it's just figuring out how the alien's learning, or not learning, but adapting to what you're doing is just a huge part of the game. And how is it going to work like through, I don't know how, how long the game lasts, but throughout the, the duration of the game, say you get spotted by the alien in the first kind of encounter that yeah. it is possible to be spotted by the alien, will it then be on high alert for the rest of the game? Will there be cooldown um, periods? How are you going to escape? Uh, a lot of it is kind of, I mean, we based it around the idea that if you were in a building searching for someone and, you'd, you know, you'd never been there before, you'd do a kind of search around, seeing what you can do. But if you heard something, you'd know it was in that area. So you'd go into that area and search a bit more detailed, maybe look inside things. And if you didn't find something, you might go away. And you're like, OK, so that's the kind of basis for it. Yeah. Now, if you take that behavior and stretch it out, including all the things you can do, as the player's learning how to use things and finding devices and, you know, kind of typical game curve of I find more weapons, I find more things I can use, you get to try those out on the alien. Yeah. And that's where the meat of the game is for me because you build up these plans in your head of, right, I'm going to throw a flare that way, I'm going to sprint down that corridor, I'm going to turn around with the flamethrower and I'm ready for him. And you do it and you run, you look at the motion tracker and the beep's not where you expect it and then you look up <laughs> and the rest is history. Yeah, I mean, there were a couple of times where I saw the motion tracker and the dot was right on top of me. I couldn't see it and all I can hear is this clang, clang, clang. <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's above me, it's in the ventilator shaft, isn't it? But uh, one of the other things that's so striking about the game is how much it uh, feels, looks and sounds like the original Alien movie. Uh, you know, how, what have you guys done to make sure it you know, is as much like the movie as possible. Well, the entire team are huge Alien fans. Like, we, it's, the reason we're making this game is because we always wanted to play a game like this. So it's really, really great to have that kind of passion on the team. That also makes us our biggest critics. Because yeah. if we put something on screen and it doesn't look right, we're like, get rid of it. That's awful. Do it again. You know, that wouldn't be in the film. And you, you, the artists have this thing they stick to where they say they won't put anything in the game uh, if it couldn't have been made on the set in 1979. Okay. So sticking to those sort of rules and keeping the same visual fidelity and, and you know, also with the incredible graphics we're able to produce nowadays, using our own engine as well, we're able to just really lift the environment up and just make it look and feel like you are on the set. And yeah. one of the guys always says it feels like if you took a left turn on the set instead of a right, you could end up in one of our rooms. And even when we're building brand new environments that could look completely different, yeah. they still feel like they're alien because they have a lot of the core components and some of the tiny little details from the original set. 
and the sound design as well walking into a room there's little little bits from Jerry Goldsmith's original <laughs> score started playing and it just kind of transports you straight back to there but you guys have got you've redone the original score for the game yes we've re-recorded large portions of the original score because obviously the you know the film is only a couple of hours long our game is close to 15 hours really yeah. so we need a lot of different music for a lot of different situations so we've kind of re-recorded parts of it uh, I believe a couple of members of the orchestra were actually present for the original recording oh, wow. of the first one so that was wow. pretty cool <laughs> and they're like oh not this again <laughs> so yeah getting the audio and the tension in the strings is really and just the kind of build up of music is really really important but the other side of it is the atmospheric side where you can hear all the creaks and groans of the station and like hissing of steam pipes and all the little clanks that you think is an alien and could be or couldn't be and then the final chunk is the telegraphing of the aliens mood and behavior because we don't have anything in world like you know exclamation marks or like you know hologrammatic projections saying the alien is angry and has seen you all you can do is look at the alien hear him hiss and turn and it's the kind of you get used to the alien sound so when you're hiding in the corner in the dark looking at this little motion tracker and you hear a grunt you're like oh okay I think that means he's looking somewhere else and you kind of get, build up this understanding of the creature. You've also got what was it lo-fi visual <laughs> stuff in there I mean the, 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 yeah the, the intro to the little demo we just played had like a little kind of intro telling you your objective yeah. is to escape <laughs> and it kind of looked the look of it was you know really did look like an old kind of VHS kind yeah. of style have you achieved that? That is actually through using an old VHS. Wow. Uh, we've got guys in the studio one of our, uh, our lead UI artist John he takes uh, clips from the game, he'll re-record them, uh, he'll put them back through a really old cassette tape through a horrible old CRT TV and film it while he's messing with the tape and jiggling the cable and putting magnets on it and everything to get all this kind of you know real distortion that you would yeah. get from analog stuff. And he plays that back, records that and then puts that back into the game as a layer over our elements like UI and like the hacking mini game and also some of our scenes. So it really does feel like yeah it's actually it is the tech it is yeah. because that's what we're using. And just to wrap up then, um, what can you tell us about the story? Because I know we're playing as Ellen Ripley's daughter. Yeah. Um, why did you decide that that kind of element of the alien canon was the area to explore for your narrative? Well, we knew we wanted a strong female lead. We knew we didn't want it to be the original Ripley. We also knew around the timeline we wanted to set it. We wanted to set it after the first film yeah. because that first film was so terrifying and just having one alien, it was, it was the thing we wanted to recreate. So. We looked at the setting and we said, well, there's, you know, the Nostromo disappeared, surely family members will be looking for the people. And we're like, well, actually, yeah, the person who probably wouldn't never give up would be, you know, Amanda, Amanda Ripley. So we thought about Amanda Ripley, we wrote kind of a story and a back, and the only thing you really hear about her is in Aliens in the special edition, where Burke's like, oh yeah, you know, your daughter, and tells her all this information about it, and he says, you know, she died an old woman and everything, but, and that seems to be the only reference. And we're like, okay, so maybe we can use that, and maybe we can work with it. And when we pitched it to 20th Century Fox, they said, yeah, go ahead, that sounds yeah. absolutely amazing. So we were quite shocked at that, because we didn't think anyone would go for it, but actually it fits so well with the story and the setting, and also the fact she's in the same situation as a mother, that it just all just came together really well. Yeah, and I guess it means that she must survive to the very end, that she's grown to an old lady, and Burke showed her the photo. Burke couldn't have been lying, right? So you trust Burke? <laughs> <laughs> we would trust Burke. Well, Gary, thank you so much. The game is amazing, but also absolutely terrifying. Um, when's it out? Uh, it's due out on 7th October on uh, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. And also today we've got the Oculus Rift prototype on uh, demonstration. So if you can handle it, I'd check it out. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to. But thank you so much for your time. No it's looking fantastic. Thank you. Make sure you check out Alien Isolation. If you want to see more stuff from E3, we've got absolutely loads of videos on our channel at the moment. So don't forget to subscribe.